What is up, everybody? Sure, I'll get to talk to nobody. But it is still going to be a fun night. Let me hit a couple invites to a few bros from other mothers. And we'll get a little fun start. Can't believe I wanted to, wanted to try to use this on my damn computer. But these damn apps do not work on anything except for fucking cell phones. Drives me nuts. How we doing? I'm spending you all hooked up. Said you've been sitting on your ass for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it do? Uh, sorry, I was uh, sending some invites to, or at least posting it on to, uh, no, to my blind. Sounds good. So did you have fun watching all these fights? Uh, yeah, man. Um, it's fun to look back at uh, some controversial fights or... Especially fights that everybody had an opinion on and then uh, really put the pen yeah. to paper, you know? Yeah, it was fun. I got gibberish all over the fucking place. I think the hardest one for me for sure was uh, the freaking Bullet versus Grasso fight. I watched the third round or the second round and the fifth round like four times. Yeah, and I mean... I, I, that's what makes it a controversial fight when it comes to uh, some of the ones that we chose is uh, you could go both ways. It, it, so, like, before um, I watched all of these fights, I went ahead and did an in-dip read of uh, the rules. I already knew them, but yeah. just to go ahead and... Because uh, you're a know-it-all. You know everything. We know. Of course, of course. Um... But then also, like, uh, I, I guess it's one thing that I was going to say. What did you learn from reading the fucking rules again? <laughs> Nothing. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, one but. thing I was going to say is that, like, there is a criteria, but at the end of the day, it's all subjective as well. You know what I mean? Like, the criteria yeah. leads us to find yeah, an answer. Yeah, like, like control. You know, when, when you have a counter, you know, you got a counter striker and you're talking about, you know, cage control. And it's like, well, that, yeah, he's spinning into the back. Yes, he has his back to the cage, but that's part of the game plan. You know, neither one of them are landing strikes, but you're going to give the aggressor. Well, who is the aggressor? I can look at it as aggressiveness or not, you know. Yeah, but um, so you're asking what I learned from uh, the rules. I did a. Uh uh screenshot a couple of things here from the official rules that i was going to uh bring up um just because uh i feel like everybody just goes by what they think they know you know what i mean and uh yeah before we get into this i thought i'd just read off at least the uh the first initial um rule, unified rules as of 2017 Effective striking and grappling shall be considered the first priority of round assessments. Right off the bat, I think people automatically think that grappling comes second to the striking because it isn't a damage calculate. Like, you can't count it as damage. But, I mean, even right here in the very first sentence, it is one of the first priority of round assessments. Effective aggressiveness is a plan B that should not be considered unless a judge does not see any advantage in effective striking grappling realm. So aggressiveness only comes in second whenever you think the first criteria is uh, equal. And then plan C, cage and ring control should only be needed when all other criteria are 100% even for both competitors. And this will be an extremely rare occurrence. Wow, that's a mouthful. I'm, yeah, I'm glad you can read that good, though. Yeah, I, I'm a great reader, man. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, and then there, there was just some certain little things like um, top and bottom position fighters are assessed more on the impact, impactful slash effective result of their actions more so than their position. Yeah. Which basically says 
you can be on bottom and still win a round, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's definitely start. We're starting to see that now. I would say in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot more judges have an open mind rather than uh, making every single person who sits with a, a takedown is like completely won the round like the old days. Uh, those were definitely always tough. Kane, how are you doing tonight, brother? What up? How you guys doing? My bad, my voice is kind of gone. Been sick. No, you're fucked up. But that was a that was a good pick. I would have went with that too. You've been drinking since noon. Like I got up early. Yeah. It's Christmas. I'm getting. I wish. Up. Yeah, well, that sucks, man. Well, what we're doing tonight is uh, me and Mr. Um here are going to go over four fights that we both watched that were decisions. Some were uh, split decisions. They weren't all split decisions, I don't think. Were they all split decisions? Um. So, <laughs> fuck you, Rando. Now I don't know. Worried about know. my ums. No, I'm worried about my ums now. <laughs> oh, we yeah. we had uh, was the idea. We had Grasso the draw. Mm-hmm. We had Pereira and Jan. That was a split decision. Bautista got the unanimous decision, and then uh, what's his name? Black Demon Blackshear and Mario. B- about oh wait no I just uh, oh, okay. uh Muniz Muniz and John Young Park that was also a split decision so we got a little bit of everything draw two splits and uh, one unanimous Woo. all right let's go from you want to go with the big one first uh actually I had thought that or is that is that going to be the finale yeah I think that was yeah. the finale I think the first one we should open up with was uh Pereira and Jan Blakovic. Okay. So first off, how did you score it? Uh, I had it with the 29-28 AP. Same, same. So and, I got um, first round, uh, goes to Jan, obviously. Easy round scorer, uses it with grappling, controls the entire round. Nobody's really injured. Who else can you give it to? Uh Round two is a close round, but like Alex steals it uh, with, you know, landing some ground activity as well. You know, I mean, he's not doing nothing. He is punching. Uh, Jan is starting to look gassed. Uh, The aggressive striking to me of AP wins the second round. And then the third round's the same thing. It's uh, very close, but he looks so you know, dead out there from all of the grappling that I feel he didn't actually do anything that gave you a chance of having any stoppage or at least see that he was getting hit with the worst, you know, more strikes, better strikes right on target. I mean, that's what AP does, but I think it's because Jan spent too much time in his gas tank with all the grappling. So it just didn't look good. So that's the reason why I gave him the win. Yeah, I think the key word that um, we'll be looking at throughout these first three fights, uh, and I think they're all three perfect example of what this means, is uh, effective grappling. Effective grappling is one of the first things we judge. The first round, that is what we call effective grappling. Uh, yeah, easy round to score. Uh, Jan Blachowicz gets the... Uh, Gets the whole first round, grabs the back, and uh, there's no there's no controversy there. When it comes to the second round, I think that was another easy one to score. Uh, Pereira just landed the overall damage, striking, and like you said, even off of his back, he landed a little bit, and that's where that effective grappling comes from. Uh, we already went over the specification in that rule saying that you can win just because you have top position doesn't mean that you're winning the position. Uh, you can win from the bottom. Alex Pereira landed the better strikes on the feet, damage, uh, lead, lead leg kick, uh, body jab, just overall strikes on the feet in the second yeah. round and then landed uh, on the ground. 
All right, well, that one sounds like it's a total agreement. Let's go to this Black Shear versus Mario. Well, uh, yeah. shit. You, you made me lose my train of thought right there. But, uh, yeah. You're good. <laughs> good at it. Well, I mean, we were just... Fuck, no, we're not in agreement. We well, Homage won that. Shit. I'm just playing. Yeah, right. Go take oh. some fucking NyQuil. <laughs> okay, okay, so check it out. This is this was one thing that I wanted to to bring up that like the wording in the rule set is just so annoying that even when you're reading it, I feel like so it shall be noted that a successful takedown is not merely a changing of position, but the establishment of an attack from the use of a takedown. Of course, right after that, top and bottom position fighters are assessed more impactful, blah, blah, blah. Basically saying you can win from the bottom. Mm -hmm. I remember when I took the class to get licensed, they essentially broke that down by saying the takedown is only a change of position. It's what you yeah, do yeah. with the takedown after that. Getting a takedown isn't counted as effective grappling. Mm -hmm. It's what Good. you do after that, as in going into the half guard, getting into side control, taking the back. Like, all that becomes the effect of grappling. The takedown is just a change of position. But like I said here, the way it's written says a successful takedown is not merely a change of position, but the establishment of an attack from the use of takedown, which... Just sounds like a fucking bunch of extra words to say. We don't kind of take down. We want you to see. We want to see what you do with the takedown. And that's what should be the main goal is the finish. You know, we're asking for you know attempts to get the referee stoppage, knockouts, or submissions. That's the game. We don't want to sit around not scoring touchdowns or kicking field goals and wondering who the fuck won. Yeah, and I think that, that plays in right there to that effective grappling narrative between the second and third round of Jan Blahovic. Like, I think people look at the third round and be like, oh, Jan, it was okay in the feet, but in that third round, Jan got the takedown. He did yeah. get the takedown with 45 seconds left. He didn't land yeah, not that one that. strike <laughs> until 16 seconds are left on the clock. Yeah. So, A effective grappling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that ain't nothing. But all right, okay. we'll do this. We'll go around the room. If anybody does want to put in their two cents on this fight, if they remember it, if they really thought that it was a bad decision or not, Cade, if you can talk, give it a shot. No, I think AP won the fight. I do, however, think that I I think these decisions get tr tricky though, and I wouldn't get mad. Not in this fight specifically, just this fight, but, like, I feel like fights like this can get tricky because even if the grappler on top is not landing anything or the guy on the bottom is not landing anything and they're just sitting there and fucking laying on each other, like, no matter what, you can't win, you can't win a fight off your back, like, when you're not attempting to to get up so yeah i mean if you're gonna spend you know full rounds on your back it's kind of hard to do anything yeah and I, i'm not saying he did that or anything like that, that but <laughs> i know the third I, I round I, I i have to remember the third round a little bit i can't remember the whole third round yeah. i do remember ap started taking over the fight though with his striking so yeah um and i do on the first solid half pretty good and then uh he did get taken down but uh at that point, yeah, I was so exhausted. Yeah, because I only remember the first round for Jan. Yeah. Hi, right, Zai, you got anything? Yo, what's good, everyone? How's everyone doing? How you doing, brother? How you doing? doing. Trying something new tonight. Nah, I like it. I dig it. Um, To answer your question, um, I agree with what Usman had to say. I, from what I recollect, uh, Jan got a takedown late. Like, it was just too late. At the end of the fight, so I kind of agree with what you guys had going there. Thank you, brother Andrew. Welcome to the party. What's up, Jones? How we doing? Doing all right. You're talking so, yawn and uh, yeah, Pajeda, right? 
Yeah. Okay, so what I recall or what stuck out to me, because I'll be honest, I didn't go back and watch it like within the last couple of days. But what I call being the biggest difference maker that nobody realizes. Um, and I'm not even saying judges take it into consideration, but if it's an observation that I've noticed, I imagine they do. Body language is a huge is a huge thing. Um, and the second and third rounds, Jan was completely gassed and he showed it. He showed it so extremely well. Yeah, and man. then after the fight ended, what's the first fuck right, right away? What does Jan do? He fucking sits down on the ground. What does Pajeda do? He walks around with his arms in the air, right? So it's like that, yeah. in my opinion, I think that played into the decision. I really do. Um, oh, yeah, it helps. Uh, it helps you win the third. Yeah, round, because sure. because he was so gassed, he didn't he didn't land a lot and he didn't land anything critical in my opinion in the second and third yeah. rounds. Yeah. He never put him. That's why changes. I think that the damage of Pajeda overweighs the grappling of Jan because Jan's grappling was a little stalemate yeah. and he didn't really do anything. So in my opinion, I think mm -hmm. Pajeda won that fight. All right. Are we on to our next one? We're going to go with uh, Blackshear. Uh, what's his first name? Damon Blackshear versus Demond Mario Blackshear. Batista. Mario Batista. Uh, I mean, the way that I had this is pretty damn easy. Uh, you could tell that Batista lost the first round and then Blackshear just couldn't do the same thing. Uh, he, he ended up just getting, you know, pieced up, landed a lot better strikes. The grappling that uh, Blackshear brought in the first round, he couldn't do it again. So I don't even know why this fucking fight was on here. So plead your case because I, I think this was simple well yeah I, looking when it happened i think a lot of us in the space were on Damon blackshear i think everybody was on the hype off of him getting a twister seven days before yeah, this fight okay. happened and um i i so know yeah, i had so this, I, guy, this is a fight. Gotcha. I know I had a fucking like plus six thousand Demond Blackshear by decision ticket, but looking yeah. back at it, I actually give it Mario Batista thirty twenty seven because uh, same same thing from what we oh, yeah, what I just first round. Dang. I didn't even I didn't even give him the first round. Now I'm not saying it wasn't close. He did land mm. good. He did get takedowns, but. What we saw throughout the whole fight was what happened in the first round as well, that Mario Batista was able to get up. Like, mm -hmm. DeMonde wasn't able to get much control or finish the fight from there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think it's... So this one's kind of an easy one. Daniel, welcome to the space. What you got? I got, I'm picking Ricky Simone by decision. I find that he knows how to pace himself better on the <laughs> Daniel, Daniel's out of tune, bro. What are you hey, Daniel, about? whatever you're smoking tonight, my man, can I have some? <laughs> no, it's just, shit. I, it's just cigar, man. Oh, no. You, you no, just no, showed yeah. me that I'm not high enough, so I'm going to hit my pipe one more time. <laughs> Holy I, shit. I, I thought you were talking about Ricky Simone. No, no we were <laughs> talking about the results of close fights. You see how it says, Rhino and Usman will discuss 2023 close decisions. Oh, shit. Miss Red. <laughs> I apologize. Daniel, so, do you uh, remember the Black Shear versus Mario Bautista fight? Damn it. No, I do not. Yeah, that's the one yeah. I think okay. we're talking about. All right, Kate, up to you. Mute your mic, Daniel. So, for me... I, uh, hold on, my daughter's yelling now. Jesus Christ. All right, so for me, me, uh, I feel like, I feel like Batista won the fight the first time I watched it, but then the second time I went back and watched it, I felt like it was close and it could have gone either way. I feel like it was, Batista had more control time, but, uh, he was able to keep Blackshear down with his two takedowns because he went two for 10 on takedowns. Damon went four for seven, but he wasn't really able to keep Bautista down. Um, and then, you know, Damon outstruck Bautista for mostly the whole fight. So, I mean, I just, I think it was close. I think the only round that he didn't uh, outstrike Bautista was in the third round. 
but the the first and the second he outstruck him. So I don't know. I think it could go either way. I don't really have like a true winner in that fight. I think you know either way you went, it you know it it could be the right decision based All on the right. fight. I'm looking it up. If you wanna, if you wanna argue, because yes, he does have. Blackshear has the eleven more strikes landed. So it was 29 out of 48 to 19 to 25 in the first round. Uh, the second round is 40 landed to 32, uh, Damon. So you're right on that one. And then the last round is the only one that, yes, Mario landed 28 to 21. Uh, they do have control time in the second uh, as one minute, one second, and then 29 seconds for Blackshear. Uh, and then when we go into where we were hitting, uh, the head was hit more in the second round by Blackshear. Uh, the rest were seven body kick, leg kicks, eight. So eight of those significant strikes were leg kicks. I always have a hard time of what the fuck a goddamn significant leg strike is because it seems like they give it to them all. Just like uh, the first round is significant strikes is seven for seven. Uh, Batistas are also five for five. So like every fucking kick they I'll hit say, with. I'll say this, though, Rhino. Part. If you got leg kicks like, what's his name, uh, Jack Jenkins? Yeah. Or you got leg kicks like Justin Gaethje or, or somebody that's actually got the leg kicks like that, those are significant, bro. I don't give a fuck what they Oh, yeah, said. but, like, not seven out of seven. No, you know? I feel you. I feel yeah, you that's on that. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm but, saying, like, Jack yeah, Jenkins, every land, time but... he kicks somebody's leg, bro, it makes me through the TV just, like, fucking make this face, bro. Like, oh, fuck. Well, then, then they go kick the bag. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm a pussy. Yeah, so that that's why, like, I'm not saying it wasn't close. I just feel like Mario and I, I was surprised I gave him the 30-27 because uh, that's that change of position. Blackshear just happened to get a takedown and not do much with it. And even in that second round, I remember thinking it was pretty close. But what did we end that round with? Uh, even if it didn't work, it was a nice submission attempt with uh, the guillotine when Mario yeah. Batista uh, attempted that. So... That's another just side of effective grappling right there. Mm -hmm. All right, what fight we got next? So let you get uh, this one off. Park, uh, Genyon Park, a little yeah, something. To just, yeah, Iron Turtle against Andre Muniz. Um, this was something that just recently happened, so it should be fresh in everybody's mind. I know both uh, Rhino and I had tickets on Genyon Park, so we were, mm -hmm. uh, we were pretty annoyed with we that sad. one. We were sad. Yeah, pretty sad. But uh, I think when you look at this one with all the... Okay, go to the potty. Freaking children. Um, <laughs> uh, no, man. Uh, after everything that we've said tonight, changing position, changing position, effective grappling, all this shit, um, I think this is actually the most perfect example of effective grappling. I think when you, and I'm not going to give it to him before all y'all shit down my throat, but when you look at the criteria and that first round, it's a hell of a lot closer to Andre Muniz getting a 10-8 than it is Junyan Park getting a 10-9. I, uh, I went ahead and gave Andre Muniz the first and the second round. Um... And uh, that was a 29-28 for Muniz. And All right, so let's go to first round. Explain your first round. You think first that round? Liam Prey, that Liam Prey, because he gets the back with a fucking triangle, means that he, like, completely did something? I don't I don't like it either because he – and this is why I say it's closer to a 10-8 round. What are, how do you score the 10-8 round? The three Ds. Domination, duration, and damage. Well, you don't get a full mount if you got a 10 8. So what the fuck are we even talking about? There was absolutely no damage, but there was 100%. <laughs> you don't get in a full mount and win the round 10 8, which means it's impossible. No, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm giving him a 10 8. I'm giving him a 10 8. Well, you shouldn't even be talking about it. He was in a full mount. 
Oh my for God! Will you let the man for, talk first for freaking <laughs> twenty one seconds? For twenty one seconds, right. look. What I'm saying is, there was no damage for sure. There wasn't, but you definitely had domination because he had your back the whole um, four minutes and thirty seconds of the fight. So he lay and, and he you, had and, and he had off. duration. Now let's go back to effective grappling. Did he just lay in your guard and just hold you down and nothing happened? Dude, they no. could have had slow music playing. <laughs> he took the back. He had a reversal. He had a sweep. He completely dominated him. Oh, okay. It wasn't so fun to watch. The strikes of the round was 13 to 3. Rhino, let him talk, man. And honestly, I, I think that I think that's not right either. Because when you look at the initial stand up in the first thirty seconds of that first round, Moniz landed some great shots as well, and then got the takedown and ragged all his ass for fucking the rest of the four minutes. Yeah, in the so, second round, because he definitely won it. No, I'm talking about the first round. Still. But he only had three minutes in the first round. And then he got reversed, turned into a full mount, and got hit significantly 13 times. Who had a better chance of actually, who showed a real chance of the fight possibly being finished? I mean, you can't judge a fight on 21 seconds. You, you can't can on significant strikes and who is actually putting the other person in danger. Okay, but back to the very first thing that we judge when we talk about judging a fight. Effective okay. striking, what, no, effective striking, what you're talking about, and effective yeah. grappling. They are not primary and secondary. They go okay, together. Did he ever get him into a close submission? He doesn't have to. He was making so movements. The lay and you think is more important than strikes. If he laid in his guard and didn't do anything, I would agree with you. But that's not the case. He took side control. He hit him control. three times he in took three the, minutes of control. He took the back. He had dominant position throughout what? What you said? Three and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. The first three, maybe no, three minutes and seven seconds. The first minute was the exchanges on the feet, which I say we both went back and looked at it. But I say Muniz landed better with the straight, the uppercut, and even landed the head kick. It was off the guard, but fucking. Moniz fucking, pay, I mean, Park paid attention to it for sure. And even yeah. Lorenzo said, oh, man, maybe he's going to do that to try and keep him from throwing that right hand. They had an exchange on the feet. I think Moniz won the exchange on the feet. And then I think he ragdolled him for the rest of the three minutes and seven seconds where he didn't la lay in his lay guard. You know, lay where he grade. did not lay in his guard. He took his side control. He took his back. It was a complete dominance and a showing of what effective grappling is. Oh, I see is. who Andrew picked in the fight, so that now we understand why you tell me I got to be quiet. Let you talk up to that side. I no, I'm saying let him make his point before you just disagree with him. In hey, the this is our show, not yours. <laughs> you get other nights. We get this night. No, no. Hey, hey, this is what we came for. We, we picked tough fights to score, and yeah, uh, we were all idea. looking for a debate. All right, Cade, what do you got? Give me my point for winning. All right. <clears throat> this fight's real simple. You got taken down 11 times and controlled for 10 minutes of a 15-minute round fight or a 15-minute uh, fight. How do you expect to win the fight? You got your back taken. You were, you were, got, you got dominated, bro. He, he, he was on the ground getting controlled for 10 minutes out of a 15-minute fight. Two-thirds of the fight, he was on his back or had his back taken. So, realistically, I mean, with this fight, there's not much to talk about. Manu's won the fight. It's that simple. Okay. Well, so but we based have to on take, that, Rhino, go hold on. When, when you're doing this, bro, I'm just saying, bro, when you do something like this, like you want to discuss these close decisions, you yeah. have to take it out of your mind of who you bet on. Trust me, oh, there's I, a lot of fucking yeah, fights you, where we bet on something and we're like, fuck, bro, we thought they won. But if you go no. back and watch it and break it down, I did. That's Mark didn't win that fight, bro. 
I'm sorry. I, no, dude, he didn't do anything in the first round. He held him for three minutes. So if you guys like this way and you want fights to be scored on control and grappling control, like he did, got the back, put himself in the triangle, you know, to that. He didn't actually put him in any submission attempts. Uh, he, he didn't actually, you know, really put anybody in danger of finishing the fight like you're supposed to. Then, I mean, that should be the game plan for all of these jujitsu uh, style fighters. They should just try for grappling. Why should they even stand up and strike? Because if they can manhandle a guy or hold on to him, why would Bo, uh, you know, Bo Nickel, who's now new into it, why in the hell should he stand with anybody? He just should wrestle fuck his way to fucking everything because we think that the judges should give it to him on that. That's well, MMA, bro. In this situation, he got reversed of doing nothing for three minutes. He got reversed, and in 45 seconds, he was hit significantly 13 times. And you guys give him nothing for that except for you still lose 10 to 9. Even no, during the fight, they were all screaming that he stole that round. So, so how do you steal a round in five minutes if somebody can just manhandle me for three? Go ahead. No. no. Can I ask you a question? He took Mount for 21 seconds. Hey, yo. Who's and control for 45. I, I, just, I just have to ask this question, though, Rhino. If you're getting ragdolled for 10 minutes of a 15-minute fight, how can you say that Park won the fight? Because he didn't do anything. It doesn't matter, matchup. though. He's if I not, hold you but, to the cage, but if Park, I hold you to the back of the cage. But Park's not round? stopping. Listen, though. But Park isn't stopping it. Obviously, he got taken down mm -hmm. 11 of 14 times. That means he is getting physically dominated he cannot stop it. If you but cannot not stop a takedown stop hey, yo, 11 you times, you dominated. aren't going to win the fight. So all you got to do is lay and pray and you win. Why Brother, fucking stand? But he got physically dominated. He, he got, got physically dominated 11 by going takedowns into a were landed that's out like of putting your, That's like me putting your back to the mat in a freaking wrestling match after you won most of the round. Okay, right now. I switch it, put you on your back. I win that fucking round because now I get a reversal and I get three points for putting your back. He reversed it and he put him in a full mount. So what he gets nothing for a full mount, that's a good position. Okay, look, look, I'm not I'm not even saying because you're right. He did get the reversal and he did get the full mount where he did land damage. Uh, my son just gave me a thumbs up because he wiped his own butt. Good um, job. But um, let me read this off to you because this word is used throughout all of this judging bullshit. And mm. I think even John McCarthy has said that it's such a stupid word to use. Impact. Impact shall also be assessed when a fighter's actions using striking or effective grappling lead to a diminishing of opponent's energy, confidence, abilities, and spirit. At the end of that round, at the end of every single round, Jun Young Park was over there gasping for air. And, dude, I'm mad about it, too. I thought we were coming up big with the Jun Young Park fucking win. But fucking mm -hmm. back to what Andrew said. when uh, Jun Young Park, to me, I give this fight two rounds to Muniz, first and second, third round to Jun Young Park. When that third I'm round ends... Thing. When that third round ends, Park is laying down on the floor, fucking gasping, dying for air. Like, when we look at the reversal, how much control time did Jun Young Park have in the third round, if you can answer that for me? Uh, third round, what was the question? How much control did Jun Young Park have? Uh, two minutes. To 2.11. Two minutes? So, you see, that's what I'm talking about. One he, second difference. He took the um, he took the position. He had the dominant position. He landed more strikes with a lot more time in that third round. When it comes to the first round, he did get controlled, and whether you like it or not, it is effective grappling. Should it be a split round? Is any judge allowed to give this round to Park? Uh, no. They well, all, or no, no, be, and that be a signified. This is the definition of. How you win it, Muniz just has to take somebody down, control them for three minutes, 
land three strikes, and even if you reverse it, no one should give him the round back to park. No, 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 and and, and I agree with you. This was a tough ass round, and that's why I said I think the first the first three fights that we have tonight were a perfect example of takedowns, control, and effective grappling. Because I think this first round is a very fucking tough round. Are you going to uh, take in the uh, fucking three and a half, four minutes of effective grappling, which you don't see the damage because you don't, it's not damaging, but it is control and dominance and fucking, it is the first thing that we judge with striking we don't see the damage or are you going to take the 20 to 40 seconds of Jenyan park getting a dominant position and landing strikes now all i'm saying and this was a tough round for me too i had to look at it multiple times but all i'm saying is that if we're going to go by the rules which the judges should be doing and hold striking and effective grappling at the same level then Muniz should win that round. Why? And I because have you guys seen the scorecard? Because he had more control. Because he has effective grappling. Okay, so and that's the first thing that we judge. Should... No, effective grappling is not the first thing we judge. Yes, I just read it. Effective, effective gra grappling is the first thing you uh, think wins a fight. No, grappling and striking are equal. Uh, effective yeah, gra striking grappling and striking are equals. There, there's yes. no yes okay so you think he did a better grappling than uh park did in striking yes so what makes his better grappling because just it was more dominant yes because he let me ask you a question and he wouldn't get did, reversed did, did he lay in his guard for the four minutes did he get reversed yeah, but also, I mean, okay, if you want to look then at the after he got reversed, then he got beat with elbows and punches for twenty to forty seconds. No, while, for forty-five. While also that's getting the, his that, back. I'm giving you. I, if I give you three hundred seven because it says it, you got to give me like forty-five. I'll give you forty-five. <laughs> fine, I'll give you forty-five. You can't turn for, mine into twenty for forty-five seconds. Mm -hmm. For forty-five seconds, he got a reversal. Landed on so top did he need a and landed he could have strike. around and landed five more strikes. Is that what he had to do? Andrew, How do much you have farther than Park has to have, go? Have you guys after? talked about the scorecards? Andrew, do you yeah, have yeah, the scorecards no, in front of you? Yes, I have the scorecard right in front of me. Yeah, Read them up, what Andrew. In the first round. Okay, so here's what I'll say, and this is how we know this is a close fight is because the judges were didn't really agree on much. It was a little bit all over the place. That's why I hate when fights are this close and people call them robberies because it's not what a robbery is. A robbery mm -hmm. is a blatant bad call, not when there's a close fight and it can go either way. They're completely different things. Round two was the only round that all three judges agreed 10-9 Muniz. The other two rounds were split. So Chris Flores was the only person to give Muniz the first round. Montalvo and Weeks gave Park the first round. The second round, like I said, was unanimous for Muniz. And then in the third round, um, Muniz won the second, or won on Montal Montalvo's scorecard, while Park won on Flores and Weeks. So it was close. It's 29-28, 29-28, 29-28. Which I think is crazy. What, what, to me, what makes it even more crazy is that I know Jacob Montalvo. I've trained at his gym. He owns multiple uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu gyms. He's a black belt guy. Looking at that first round and fucking it being mostly jiu-jitsu. You're never going to talk to him again, are you? Uh, I, no, I have to. This guy. Um, <laughs> but looking at that first round... Where if you're taking my argument of fucking three three oh seven to be exact of effective grappling, you would think the jujitsu guy would give him that fucking round, but instead he didn't give him that round and he gave him the third round, which I will say fucking part got the reversal, landed on top, and did a lot more damage than he did in the first fucking round. Like it, judging judging be hard. Kate, you had your hand up. 
for like two hours. Yeah. I I was just going to say, I, I really don't think this fight's that difficult to score. Maybe it's just me, but I really don't. I think... Well, like, my, my judges agree in, with in me. A, they didn't agree with a, you, just so you know. In a fight where you... Neither fighter lands all that much damage, you mm-hmm. know? It goes to the next criteria. And you got slammed on your fucking ass 11 out of 14 fucking times. No, and you, you got fucking controlled for 10 minutes of the fight. And There's that's no that. Slamming. You lost the fight. You deserve to lose the fight. You got lost a grappling match. You, you didn't land enough grappling. damage. It's not that fucking hard. Park got yeah. slammed around, got bitched around by Muniz. Oh, yeah. I'm sure Park simple. was hurting with the 14 and times he was parked. 29, 28 Muniz, baby. <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> you can hear you can hear Kay's voice start breaking and get more higher when he knows he's <laughs> rattling of Rhino. Uh, Rhino, go ahead and send it to the next one. All right. The last, which is the final, right? Is yes, sir. the check. We have... Uh, the rematch with uh, Bullet, and uh, we also have Rosa with her first title defense, right? So, uh, Grasso, Grasso you Grasso. motherfucker! Grasso, yeah, my bad. So, Grasso versus Bullet. Uh, the rematch comes in. I, I thought the you know the first fight was very you know amazing, hell of a war. Crazy how she got the back and turned that in right at the, like, I think the fourth round or something like that. So glad that the UFC made this a rematch and everything like that. Uh, first round, I think, was obviously easy to score with takedowns to strikes. Uh, Bullet dominated the first round, so that was kind of simple. Then we get to the second round, and uh, they are, you know, landing some, a pretty close situation where Grasso gets a knockdown. Uh, was it like a hardcore stanging leg knockdown? No. Uh, that's why she was able to, you know, do a back roll and still stand up. But it landed flush. It totally is a knockdown. Great way that they scored it that way. Uh, then the fight takes a turn where Bullet gets her takedown. And she kind of does baby punches the entire time where she's doing the aggressiveness. But she's not really doing anything with it. So I gave Grasso the second round. Uh, we go into the third, gets back to dominated by striking and grappling with uh, uh, Bullet. So I think she wins the third round. We get into the fourth. Uh, we've got more of a stand that was a close round, but I think Grasso gets, she gets a cut. Uh, but I believe she wins the fourth round with more of a aggressiveness that she's doing. I think Valentino was more... Uh, trying to save some gas for the fifth round. So then we get to this fifth round, and it starts off with bullet landing, a lot of good strikes, hitting, connecting really hard and stuff like that. And then she does a stupid attempt to try to take her down with like a head and arm freaking uh, swing uh, and falls to her back, and Grasso does a pretty decent ground and pound. She doesn't land very amazing shots or anything like that that I think really put her in damage, but it definitely looked like it was in pretty uh, odd scenarios. And then she gets her into good submission attempts. So originally I kind of gave that round when I first watched it to Valentina and now I give it to Grasso. So I gave Grasso the fight. I give her the second, the fourth and the fifth. Yeah, uh, I scored it uh, the exact same way. And I feel like when you're looking at uh, these rounds, close rounds, I think you just have to ask yourself um, qualitative versus quantitative. I think uh, Grasso just ended up landing the harder shots. I, I know just to go to the fourth round because I think the second, first, second, and third are pretty damn easy. Knocked down, mixed with those good combos from the clinch of Grasso in the second round. That's easy. First and third, I was shaking in my boots as a damn Grasso's better and fan. Fourth round, fourth round, uh, very tight. But once again, I think um, the knees, the knees are very impactful. Uh, right after those knees, she landed some good combos as well. Just, just the harder shots in that fourth round. 
And then just to end that fourth round, if you fucking thought it was close, she rolls for the knee, uh, the knee bar that turns into a heel hook, and that's effective grappling. Uh, she doesn't matter that well, it was. Well, we fucking... know you love that effective grappling. We got that. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, baby. Um, but I mean, she went for it. She went for a submission. And uh, Valentina had to have some pause on it right there and at least pay attention to it. So that's going to edge her the round. When it comes to the fifth round, I feel like a lot of people think like Shevchenko was just running away with those first four minutes before she fucked up. And I, I really don't see the like, first three. First three she was. I, I don't even know about that, man. I say the first minute goes to Grasso. Grasso literally comes out and in the first 10 seconds pops her with a right straight that is really hard. Um, in a little bit, like 20 seconds later, fucking Shevchenko overcommits and gets caught with a three-punch combo. That third one maybe skids off the face, but that's a good three-punch combo that lands. She's countering a lot of the jabs because fucking Shevchenko was eating her up with the jab, but she's countering the jabs with the leg kicks. Like, if you're going to not count a jab is that significant, the leg kick's not that significant, mm -hmm. let's at least equal them out. Like, it was a pretty fucking, uh, it was a pretty close round, in my opinion. And so fifth round. All right. You want to look at the stats? Look at the, I got them up. I got them up. All right, it's 20 to 23. Uh, significant. Valentina. Yeah, significant. Valentina hit her in the head, 20 to 11. So that would all be on the feet in the earlier of the round. So she was definitely piecing her up in the first few minutes. But then when it went to the ground, she was... You know, she put in some solid freaking rear naked chokes that were close to fucking finishing that fight. And then also, like, like you look at the total strikes, 43 to 41 with um, Grasso up. But it's like, I don't even really like looking at the stats anymore because I made sure I sat there and I counted. And not all of them are landing. Some of them are yeah. landing to the arm. Second Some round. of them are... No, I'm talking to uh, I'm talking about the fifth when she when she gets her down. Okay. Uh, when she gets her down, uh, she goes for I think 36 unanswered strikes, and like I said, I don't know if they don't want to count them because some of them land on the arms or the glove because Grasso, I mean Shevchenko was just there covering up, but like I think I think it's like 36 unanswered strikes of just Grasso throwing and throwing, and Shevchenko's face is down on the floor. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't give her the 10-8 round. I think Grasso won it completely fair. 2-4-5, uh, 10-9s, 10-9s, 10-9s. Yeah. But the second round, the crazy thing in the stats is it gives her 28 significant strikes. I've watched that three fucking times. I don't know where the hell they got 28. <laughs> Have you guys seen the scorecards? Uh, uh, I've got them in I front of me. Watch it. All right, go ahead. Okay, so... It's you. The first three rounds are unanimous. The only difference in these scorecards are rounds four and five. So that kind of tells you what you need to know. So, so two didn't go either. It didn't have a split round, huh? Yeah. So round one, it was uh, everyone agreed 10 9 Shevchenko. Round two, everyone agreed 10 9 Grasso. Round three, everyone agreed 10 9 Shevchenko. And then rounds four and five is where it gets tricky. Because round four, Michael Bell gave 10-9 Shevchenko. D'Amato, 10-9 Shevchenko. Uh, Camillo, 10-9 Grasso. So then you're going, okay, cool. Let's see what happens in the fifth round. That 10-8 is where the difference is because Michael Bell gave Grasso 10-8. So he had a 47-47 scorecard. Yeah, that's Sal that's part. I forgot gave about this fight. Sal D'Amato gave 10-9 Grasso, so he had 48-47 Shevchenko. Now, Camillo gave 10-9 Grasso, and he had 48-47 Grasso. So the difference maker in this fight, realistically, is that 10-8. And I think that's what we were all saying, like, after the fight happened, is because, again, if these, and unless, 
unless we can all agree that rounds four and five were just unanimous, but these scorecards are saying otherwise. And I remember saying this fight could be a draw. Like I could see it. However, I disagree with the 10, eight, and I think it should have been 10, nine. So by that, I would have given it to Shevchenko, but I wouldn't have been mad either way because it was a really close fight. And I think the draw kind of made sense except the way it was scored. Yeah, there's no way in hell you can say there's a 10-8 round in any of this fucking fight. Well, he, insane. well here I go. Uh, I'm not saying it was a 10-8 round. I already said I gave it 10-9, 2-4-5. Um, but just to fucking figure out how the fuck he came up to it, maybe he was like me and thought that the striking was actually equal leading up to that issue. Um, where fucking Shevchenko fucks up on the takedown. Because I don't see... The jab was, of course, working for Shevchenko. It looked great. You just said mm -hmm. 20 out of 23 strikes were to the head. Those are mm -hmm. them, them's all jabs. Yeah. Maybe, well, they weren't all jabs. That's not true. Basically. <laughs> I just um, watched the motherfucking fight, too, okay? But, uh, but maybe Mike Bell just didn't put much weight into it and was thinking that Grasso's strikes, because I think she had the uh, quantitative or qualitative strikes. Um, and then it comes down to where it just does not look good when your fighter is face down. And Shevchenko did not try to move when she's face down and gets rained down 36 strikes on her, landing yeah, on her head good. or not. Like, if it... So let, let's just say Mike Bell was thinking Grasso won before that. Then Grasso goes and gets a minute of 30 on top, landing strikes without being answered to, then tries to two submissions. If he thinks that Grasso won the first half of the round, that then that means it's domination, duration, and damage, and that's a 10-8. Three Ds, automatic 10-8. I don't agree with him, but I'm just trying to find out where he found this 10-8. And if he's like me and think that Grasso did good in that first half of the round, then I think that's probably where he got that. Because shit, Junichiro Camillo, Junichiro Camillo or however the fuck you say his name, gave Grasso the fifth round. Both of us are here saying that we gave Grasso the fifth round. Um... Uh. Uh, I don't like it. Still. it. I don't it's like it. Crazy. I yeah, mean, that's the thing. All Kate three judges man, gave hand up for a while. Let me give Kate his, his give him some time. He's sick. We gotta take care of him. Wait, what'd you say? When I said you had your hand up for a while, so I was giving you some time. Oh no, I was just gonna say. I think I I I had Grasso win in the fight personally, but I think it was a close fight and the draw. You know, it could have been a draw. But I mean, that ten eight to me was a little ridiculous. So I mean, yeah, and if without the ten eight, I think the fight goes to Shevchenko. If I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. I mean, Andrew, I personally, I had something. Andrew, what do you got? Wait, what'd you say? I was shooting it back to Andrew. You were agreeing with us, so that's why I'm, I'm gonna throw it to Andrew. Oh no, I was just. Uh, saying about the fifth round like all three judges did give grass of the fifth round it's just only one of the three judges gave it a 10-8 yeah that's insane young blood what do you think i think regardless of who actually won the fight the judges did it perfectly because they saved us from valentina continuing with the most boring title run you've ever seen in your life Oh, well, she could bore me as much as she wants in the bedroom. That would be great. Yeah, but you know, baby, how have you been? <laughs> Holy shit, you just got hey, a yacht, probably. Do you guys think this, though? I Because yeah. I, I think this is true. I think if a judge judges, let's say it's a three-round fight, and all three yeah. judges agree on the first round, right? And then a judge realizes you know, the second round happens and he realizes he fucked up in the second round with scoring. Then in the third round, he go, he'll just score for the other fighter to make up uh -huh. for the second round. Sometimes I don't feel like they do that. Scenario. 
Yeah, I feel like they, do it, they should call it some. What is that scenario? Because it is it's definitely true, especially in five rounders. I think it definitely happens in five rounders. D baby, you talking tonight, or you just came in here to show off your beautiful picture? I guess he's ordering food. I will say, um, leading into the third fight, uh, there is that stat that uh, under 170 pounds, 2 and 33, I always say give Amanda Nunes the respect. It's 3 and 33 because she did win a fight 35 and older. Um, we've got Valentina mm -hmm. Shevchenko. She was 35 in this fight. And when you look at the stats, you look between the first fight and the second fight, um, she was, she had more output in this fight. Um, she was more, uh, she was more accurate in this fight. Uh, I want to say this was probably one of the best performance Shevchenko has, uh, has had in a long time. I mean, it's by oh, her man, fucking she, dominant. The fifth round though, man, she had it. She well, what I'm saying is, dumb fucking curve. What, I, what I'm saying is that she's did everything even statistically did everything that she could to win this fight and she still only left with a draw. I yeah. think where, when we come to this third fight, we bet on the 30-year-old that uh, has a whole lot more to give and a lot more to learn um, coming into this trilogy soon. Yeah, without a doubt. Young Blah, what do you got towards him? Uh, Usman had just said that we saw like a really good performance from Shevchenko and I agree. Dogs always act really young when they're about to die. <laughs> Ouch, man. I hope she fucking runs into you and beats the shit. Yo, you don't like Valentina or what? I think she would look good on her knees in front of me, but I don't really care for her as a fighter. But well, you're into dudes, so it doesn't help. You're into dudes, so it doesn't matter. All right. So, I mean, to me, the biggest thing with this fight is it really broke into a, a situation with almost the opposite of the last fight where in the fifth round here, we seen somebody that I think was doing pretty good, but then when it got to the ground, she completely kind of folded. And, and if you curl up in a ball, you just deserve to, to lose a round, you know? Uh, and that's kind of what I look at with that past fight with the turtle. He did the same thing. You know, he, took uh, the switch now he's in full you know full mount he didn't end in full mount but he did attempt to actually put in some pound uh, ground and pound obviously he didn't get no rear naked choke or anything like that which is way more significant than anything that you can do on the feet and that's what makes it a controversial or a split round we're always going to have guys that i would say no matter what the judge is going to, and we're definitely seeing the pattern now of judges going based off of the strikes landed more than the significant grappling. Should they be treated the same? Well, we want them to be the same, but our biasness knows that we want to watch fucking strikes landed or submission attempts actually completed. And when the strikes are landed more, as soon as you hit one that looks freaking significantly, you know, real significance, you know, pops a head back, gets an eye look, you know, snaps a head back, gets any type of sound, that's uh, just a takeaway to give it to that person. That's what we want to see. That's what the fans want to see. It's what the, it's all about. So I think that plays a role in what we're starting to see rather than I don't want it to go that way. I don't want to get back into the 2000s when we were watching all these guys freaking nut hug and win decisions after 15 takedowns and stuff like that. I don't want it to go that way. If you're going to take it to the ground, I want you to start, you know, attempting to get into some uh, attempts at submissions or ground and pound to finish the fight. You know, if you're not, if you're sitting in guard for too long, I would stand you the fuck up, you know, not immediately or anything like that don't get mad but if it's been a minute and you haven't done anything well then it's time for you to fucking uh do something stand it back up you know because we we want to see a finish we want to see somebody actually show their martial art and finish the guy but all right i'll land the plane bye i mean and it all comes in waves like you said there was way back when where uh 
that was called lay and pray. Um, where we had all these NCAA wrestlers coming into the sport and uh, nullifying jujitsu and just holding them down and every once in a while throwing a little strike here and there. Um, no jujitsu guys do that. And uh, we got away from that and it's coming back. And I think it, once again, the striking will come back in. Um, I know I always like to say when it comes to uh, my favorite fighter, Henry Cejudo beating Demetrius Johnson. Um, mm -hmm. If we look at nowadays rules, I think Cejudo probably loses that because he didn't do much with the takedowns. Mm -hmm. But um, that was just what we were talking about earlier as a change of position, not effective grappling. Like Dominic Cruz when he fought DJ. Same thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But uh, nowadays, I mean, we, we there's there's got to be a give and take. Like I know what you're saying about not doing much and giving, just standing them back up. But like, if I get on your back and I got the body triangle in, yeah, I'm you're like, that. I'm like seventy five percent. Even if I don't try for a rear naked choke, I'm seventy five percent of the way there to get it done. So. It's it's hard, it's hard. Uh, that's why you've heard me come in these spaces and say like, uh, try to make a point for judges and for refs because uh, when you look at this shit, it ain't that easy. Hey Joe, uh, now that you're here, I know you missed it earlier. I know you were crying with me about fucking Demon Blackshear not winning a decision. I gave it thirty twenty seven, Doug. Sorry. Yeah, because he, he totally lost. Well, I, I totally agree with you on that fight because he, you know, Blackshear looked tired. As soon as you get gassed, you're you're just losing all the judges in the close rounds, no matter how much you put into those, you know, fairy swings that you put up. But, oh, D-Baby, what's up? He, he finally got back, got done ordering, ate all of his food, put his hand up. What you got? Yeah, you funny, big dog. What's poppin'? Doing good, man. How you been? I've been chilling. Shit, uh, what y'all think of that? Dustin Jacoby and Manafield. Y'all, y'all think that was a uh twenty nine twenty eight was, uh, was a good decision. I just think uh Manafield just had his moments, like, but he wasn't winning the minutes. Uh, it was a close fight, no doubt about that. I uh, would, Jacoby, I think was starting to get pretty tired towards the end. Uh, but then the second round was pretty easy to score for Manafield. And then when it got to the third round, I think he landed like three decent strikes. And then he did that takedown to, you know, take the fight. Yeah, uh, so right. Kind of like, a, I would say, a bitch route of uh, what we want to see. We want to see guys like go for some person finishes. But uh, he ended up going with the takedown, which I mean, you can't, you can't bash it. I mean, these guys get paid to win. They get paid to freaking get the double. That's going to be their, uh, sometimes the game plan when you want to win a fight. I just but, think Menafield landed the more damage, bro. Like, but it was Jacoby like, was it was his moment. He was winning. He was, Jacoby was winning the minutes for the most part. But as soon as he was, as soon as he got too comfortable, Menafield cracked him and hurt him. And anytime you, you wobble and do all that bullshit and show that you're visibly hurt, the judges see that shit, bro, and it's an automatic fucking, like, I'm just saying, bro, like, Menafield hurt him more than he hurt Menafield, and that's why Menafield won the fight. Yeah, because, I mean, even if you look at the numbers, 14 to 28 in the first round, Jacoby, 27 to 31, second round, Jacoby, and 27 to 34, third round, Jacoby, but... Like I think Baby has it perfect. I mean, minutes versus uh, minutes versus moments, and uh, like Kate said, when you got that stanky leg, when you're wobbling around, it just looks real scary for the judges. And I think they see that and go. So they gotta go uh, with that. And then also, I mean, there was. Man, Did that fight go to decision? Yeah, man. Yeah. Why do I feel like he got him out of there right before the bell or something? Nah, it didn't look like yeah, he, he was about to. It's about to. It's looking like it. Okay. Well, not to mention, baby, not 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 saying it like this, but like it any round that you're fucking winning and you get knocked down in 
all that winning goes out the window for the most part. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. You know, I guess so, yeah. All right, I mean, that, I'm just saying, bro. I mean, that's tomorrow. more times than not. Unless you're, like, dominating on, and you get knocked down, then maybe it cancels out, anymore. but... Yeah. I feel it. Dude, I, I think... got a bunch of fight money on this stuff tomorrow. What's going on in the boxing world? It's a, that's a nah, badass I mean, card. Well, I know you got a bunch of money on it. Nah, I didn't look into the card yet. I'm going uh, really? to look later tonight. Wow. Hey, well, you better drop them fucking plays in the chat, dog. We know we, know we uh, I was thinking, what, what's his name, Joshua? Uh, Joshua Wilder. Yeah, Joshua Wilder, Wilder partner. Yeah, Inouye, Inouye. Yeah, Inouye's fighting tomorrow? Nah, he fight, uh, I think Sunday or Monday. Like, two days oh, after. Shit. Let me give me that four leg with Wilder, uh, Wilder, Joshua, Inouye, and, uh, Bevo, no? Isn't Bevo fighting? Oh, yeah, yeah Bevo fighting. Yeah, yeah. Man, are you at the grocery store? 500. <laughs> Man, them diggas is juice. You got to put like five bands on that shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Otto real. Wallen might upset, yo. Otto Wallen might upset Joshua on some real shit. Man, shut the hell up, young boy. I was telling you that a while back, and you were like, who the fuck is Wallen? He has Baby. no names on his shit. Yeah. Baby. What's up? Are you at the grocery store? Yeah, you know. I'm How like, much shit are you getting, bro? <laughs> no, not much. Uh, shit. Not, not a lot. Nah, baby's behind the cash register. He don't give a <laughs> fuck. He's scanning somebody out and he's like, hold That's on. That's what I was thinking, yeah. bro. I need to get on this face. Man, why you quick. giving up my... Why you giving me up, man? Yeah, I work at the grocery <laughs> store, man. So what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an honest living, about. man. Yeah. Honest look. <laughs> he was stealing. He was stealing all those uh, pictures. He, he just don't want to pay taxes. All the money he's making online, so he got to make it look like he still got a job. Andrew, pull up on me, man. I work at the, yeah. I work at the one on Camino Norte. Bro, I'm not going all the way down there. I just fuck with you. Or no fucking grocery he's store, like, man. Yeah. We, Andrew's people don't go down to that area. His mom told him it's a bad area. <laughs> My people? What the hell does that mean? I said your mom. No, you said my yeah, people. Funny. Oh, yeah. Yes. Man, you live in Summerlin. You live in Summerlin, huh? Uh, technically, no, but I would tell people because they would understand where I live. I'm like, put it this way. If I were if I were on the other side of the street, I'd be in Summerlin. <laughs> I see, but I'm technically me. still in Spring Valley. I feel it. They got Wilder getting the knockout because under under ten and a half is a minus four hundred. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm straight. You want in the back seat? Well, yeah, so, like, how far do you go down? Do you think it even makes it to the six and a half is at... Yeah, I don't know. If you go over six and a half, it's at minus uh, 139, started at 142. Yeah, I'm not feeling that. That so might go under 100%. And it flipped for the under because the under, well, it flipped the opposite way. The under started off as a minus 107, and then now it's a plus 105. So there's people thinking it gets past uh, six and a half. Yeah, that's a little sketchy. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to get too crazy in this. Every time I get that, I had to bet on uh, freaking Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia to just for over seven and a half, and then motherfucker beat him oh, yeah. in the eighth round. Got him in the right sixth round. That. No, he got, he got him was the sixth round? I thought it was seven. Uh, no, whatever I had, it was by the half. No, it might have been a seven. It might have been. Not, yeah, if I didn't... had on that, I'm so pissed off. I feel it. Yeah, we're going to see. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'll put it in the chat, though. If I... All right. Oh, all right. But, young boy, I seen your ticket, so... You already got your shit. Who do you got in this? Young boy, you got some tricks on this boxing stuff tomorrow? I don't have a ticket yet, but I'm going to put in a parlay yet. 
Oh, I'm a see. Oh, I'm thinking about Parlay Kid. My, my bad. I'm thinking about Parlay Kid. Yeah, definitely not me. I haven't put anything out yet. I've been looking at it, though. Uh, Usman did tell me a little bit ago Wallen wasn't a joke, and I just kind of wrote it off because of the name. But then I went and looked into it more, and dudes, dude basically beat Fury, but you can't beat Fury. So I would go uh, probably decision on him or a KO flat out, but I, it's hard to get a decision. You know what I'm saying? You could go Joshua split, or you could go like a, a unanimous on uh, Wallen if he did it. Because if he was going to do it, he'd have to really beat the fuck out of Joshua so they would not rob him. Well, I mean, the plan's definitely for Wilder and Joshua to both finish these guys so they can sell the next card. I mean, that that's definitely the plan. Yeah, Wilder's already got a deal with Hearn or whatever for the next fight. Yeah. So that part plays a pretty decent role in it. Oh, that's I'm going to get this money, man. I'm going to holler at y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all. All right. All right. All right. Well, we'll see you next uh Hey, we do them on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays now, D-Baby. Uh, so that gives you less excuses for why you missed the show. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll be, I'll be Take it easy, brother. You have a good holiday. You too. All y'all do. Hey baby, before you leave, What's before up? you leave, What's up? uh, Jarrell Miller be beating Dio Dubois. Or what? Who? Jarrell Miller, isn't he big baby? Oh, uh, yeah. Has he yeah, been caught name. like three times for fucking yeah. steroids and shit? And they're still letting his oh, ass yeah, fight. Oh yeah, yeah. And he lost uh, Mirko Krokop twice. I don't even know who that is. I'm gonna keep it up. Oh, it's it just uh, big black dude, uh, Jarrell Miller. Hey, all I'm saying, I'm, I'm gonna look at it because I know if you get caught three times with steroids and they're still letting you fight, I'm gonna. Man, gonna all the niggas you. take steroids. Man, every fighter in the world takes steroids. Yeah. So I'm just not hiding. But he's getting caught. He must have that yeah. good shit. He <laughs> got a bad. Yeah, he got that good. You know, Islam on steroids. They just know how to hide that shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh heck yeah. But, uh, as a matter of fact, what y'all think about uh, Volk and uh, Deporia? I, I might put a ban on Deporia. Yeah, I already I, put I, I do it. Yeah, I threw, D baby, uh, put whatever you want on Topuria. He is gonna knock Volk on his fucking ass. I don't know. I'm not going. I'm not saying all that. I just think he gonna win. But I, yeah, I just threw. Well, I threw money on it just when it opened because he was the dog, and I'm like, well, I I disagree with that. I'm pulling the trigger though. I'm plugging. I believe. Oh man, man, he's old. Then he just got to. Get, I mean, Volk got to go up. I think it's too quick for the fight. I don't like the circumstances. I don't like any of that. I don't like Connor's down freaking thumbs. You know, yeah. but it's a. It, it's definitely a fight that I think Volk now after going up and now they have to cut back down is going to be a little bit tough. So hey, I'm not hey. going with him just being a favorite. Y'all mathematicians. Y'all mathematicians help me out. So Bet Online doesn't show me parlay odds. So I always just mm -hmm. put in a dollar to see like what, what it's gonna be. Yeah, so yeah. one dollar on this just put four a hundred leg. in. Put a hundred. Okay, fine, a hundred. It doesn't matter. Um one hundred wins you fifty two dollars. What is that? Is that minus two hundred yeah, minus one fifty? Yeah, that's a minus one forty eight. Because you're only going to win fifty or forty eight dollars for a hundred bucks. Well, that's what uh, Dimitri Bivol, anyway, uh, Joshua and Wilder gets you minus two one forty eight or whatever you said. Yeah. I see. Did uh, someone yeah. say Big Mac? <laughs> Big Mac. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, I guess that uh, that ends it right there. Right, that kind of wraps it up, man. I, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, the one thing that we'll throw in here, of course, we uh, are promoting CapMMA.com. That is our site for all kinds of sources and line movement. Uh, we're kind of doing some little fun time for the open because we don't have uh, you know, three weeks of no fight, which is like a violin playing to all of us hardcore crazy asses that watch fights 24-7. Uh, but capmma.com is a breakdown. We do shows on uh, Tuesday. 
uh, which is usually a fun what's going on in the MMA world. Friday is a little bit more uh, straight on who you got, what's your parlays, who's your favorites, who's your dogs. Uh, and then Sunday, me and Usman do a review of the lines, what things we think we missed, and uh, what things we capitalized in and scored. So come in, hit us up any of this time. Cap and MMA, guys, give us the follow. Thanks. Yeah, next, next Sunday, I guess uh, the prompt will be... Um... We're recognizing New Year's Eve or some shit. Is it New Year's Eve? Fuck it. Then we'll have to do Friday or something because our ass was going to fucking do a show on Christmas Eve. Um, yeah. But whenever our, we do our next show, uh, I think me and Rhino talked about it. It's going to be uh, value. That V word that a lot of us don't like to say here at Cap and May. Just a quick teaser. Taisuro, Tyra, everybody and their fucking mom was betting negative money on submission. He goes out there and wins a fucking knockout plus 660. And if you fucking did it knockout round one, it was going to be like plus a thousand, blah, 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 whatever. Like, value. Is it worth it betting on something that shouldn't happen? Yeah, I Because when it crazy. does happen, it's fucking big old lottos, baby. Well, and I didn't think it was crazy, too, because that kid's been so talked about. And then everybody that I heard say that he was going to, like, lose. I was like, why would you waste your money on that attempt? Hey, That's but we'll save it for next week. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody, for jumping in. Take it easy. Laters.